think about the origins of Al-Aqsa or no? The meaning of the authentic about the Aqsa? Yes, we do have authentic about the Aqsa. Uh, and by the way, they mentioned lots of things in the people of the book, stories about Yaqub al-Islam being not a good prophet. Okay? And, uh, and even that, uh, even uh, some of the prophets got drunk, uh, like Prophet Idris, he got drunk or something. They, they mentioned a number of things that, hang on a second, this cannot be fitting a prophet to get drunk and all of that. And then he made their children to stone him. It doesn't really fit a prophet. A prophet has to be chosen from the best. Uh, Bayt al-Aqsa, Masjid al-Aqsa, has been mentioned a number of times. Mentioned in the Quran. Subhanallah, the Asra, the Abdi, the Masjid al-Haram, the Masjid al-Aqsa, the Ribarak al Hawla. So what we saw. In that story, in that surah, mentioned Al Masjid al Aqsa and also the one we have given blessings around it. So we know the Masjid al Aqsa also from the hadith of Abi Dhar. When he asked Prophet of Allah what was the first person Masjid was built, he said, Haram Makkah, Al Kaaba. And then what? He said, Masjid al Aqsa. How many years between them, Masjid of Allah? He said, 40 years. Because of the 40 years, that number. We understand now the hadith of the Prophet of Allah when he says when Prophet Sulaiman built the Masjid al-Aqsa, he means rebuilt because there's no way between Prophet Sulaiman and Prophet Ibrahim who had built the Kaaba is 40 years. It's more than a thousand. And we cannot really say what well, 40 years with Barakah, that means 1,000. It doesn't work like this. Okay. But Prophet Sulaiman, he had renewed the building, and that's Ibn Kathir's opinion. And Prophet Yaqub is the one who built it. That's where, where the stories of the people of the book that he marked the land, he marked that stone. We say that it's not authentic to go into the details of it, but we know that he is the one who had built Masjid Al-Aqsa. Okay? And there's no such thing called Salomon Temple. Salomon uh, Temple or Haikal. Haikal is a temple? Haikal, Haikal Sulaiman, which the Jews claimed in the same way. We're in Masjid Al-Aqsa. He had built it 40 years between the building of Kaaba and the building of Masjid Al-Aqsa. And the Masjid Al-Aqsa is a masjid whom the Prophet of Allah blessed by saying that he's saying that three masajid you have, you're allowed to make a designated journey to. Masjid Al-Haram, the Masjid of Mine, which is the Masjid of the Prophet, and Masjid Al-Aqsa. And it's the first Qibla of the Muslim. They used to be praying to the Qibla of Masjid al-Aqsa for 17 months before the command came to the Prophet of Allah to change the Qibla to the Ka'bah, 180 degrees. But does it mean that the Prophet of Allah, when he asked for the Ka'bah of change, he doesn't like Masjid al-Aqsa? No. It means because he wanted to be different from the Jews. And also Masjid al-Haram in Mecca is better than Masjid al-Aqsa. Because Masjid al-Haram is a haram, where Masjid al-Aqsa is not a haram. How many harams do we have? Two. al Mecca and Medina. But Al-Aqsa is not a haram. Uh, what's the definition of a haram? If you can just wait, we'll just have to wait. We're gonna <laughs> <laughs> so, the haram, because some people say, Thalith al haramain third of the haram. It's not correct. It's not third. There's no haram. Haram means a sanctuary. A place where Ibrahim, he made Mecca haram, and Prophet of Allah, Muhammad, he made Medina haram. You're not allowed to bear arms, so you could feel safe when you come to the Ibadah. You're not allowed to hunt. You're not allowed to cut the trees around it. Only the grass, which has been given as a permission, because they use it for uh, the deceased. You're not allowed to have a, a lucky found, so you found something, can't really take it. Like if you found it somewhere else, you could take it. Okay, but this one you can't. So you hand it into the lost and found property. Uh, this is the haram basically. So no hunting, no bearing of the arms, no cutting the trees, and no... Okay, it's called sanctuary. And it's indicated as well. So this is, the, this is basically, he is not a haram, Mr. Laksa, but he is the first qibla. And also praying in there equivalent to 250 multiples. If you pray Mr. Laksa, equals 250 of, for example, in Masjid Qur'an to Islam, Luton. 250 times. Whereas Masjid of the Prophet, 1,000. And Masjid of the Kaaba, 100,000. And also the Prophet Muhammad he said, our Prophet Sulaiman had asked Allah for three things. 
dominion which not been given to anybody else before and that is the control of the jinn Allah gave it to him and he's been given to him that and the second one which is a judgment that would synchronize with the judgment of Allah and it's been given to him when he judged between the two sisters regarding this you know the story of the son two sisters they claim the child each one said smile well, there's no smile so he went into the Prophet he said okay well, it belongs to the older one so they went back to the Prophet Sulaiman, his son, Dawood, son of Dawood. He said, okay, bring me the knife, let me cut it in two halves, and each one have a half. So the younger one, she said, no, no, it's not mine, it belongs to the older one. So he, straight away he said, it belongs to you. Because she's the one who sacrificed her own son for the sake of saving his life. So he ruled with the rule of Allah. And the third one, he says, I hope Allah, the Prophet Muhammad, he said, I hope Allah gave it to Sulaiman, and that is, any person who prays in Masjid al-Aqsa comes back, is like newly born. All his sins are cleansed, just like Hajj. And I hope that Allah, he did not, that he's given it to him. Allah had given it to him. And that is, once you go to Masjid al-Aqsa, for the sake of praying in it, not for the sake of tourism, and looking at the uh, architecture. Okay? For the, for the sake of the praying, and you come back, your sins have been cleansed. And the Prophet said, I hope that I will have because at the time of the Prophet, it was under the control of the Romans. I, I, uh, it is, he says that uh, to, to have a land where, by which you could look at Masjid al-Aqsa is better than the whole world and the whole life. Just uh, an area to, to, to look at the Masjid al-Aqsa is better than the whole world. And also Allah will bless not just Masjid al-Aqsa, the, the area around it. Masjid al-Aqsa is the land of Bilal Sham, the land of the Mahshar. They're going to gather, people are going to be gathered there on the day of resurrection. It's the land we're gonna Isa al Sanan is gonna lead the prayer there, the Muslims, and is gonna kill at the jail in that area. So they're gonna be praying in the Masjid al-Aqsa and then after that they will switch up the door will be open and the, the ones with the Dajjal will be killed by the Muslims. And the Dajjal will run away. He dissolves. He dissolves as soon as he's like a milk, salt dissolves in the water. He'll dissolve, but he will say, No, no, I've got a knockout in you. So he keeps him the last blower. And that will be in Babylon, and he will die. And that's the area. It's going to witness all of that. And it's one of the areas which the Jal cannot enter. Masjid al Aqsa, not the whole land, just the Masjid. As for the whole land, Mecca, the whole land. Medina, the whole land. The whole sanctuary. But the Masjid, Masjid al Aqsa. You go inside, the Jal cannot come inside. And Masjid al Aqsa is, belongs to the Muslims. And you, if we are in control of the land there, we give freedom to all religions to practice their own religion. The Jews in their synagogues and the Christians in their churches. Like at the time of Umar al-Khattab But now, when the Israelis are in control of the Muslims there, they don't allow them under the, under the 45 years to go on prayer. Okay. That's the, that's the problem. Anyway, anyway alhamdulillah, that's... Uh, a glimpse of Masjid al-Aqsa.